Okay, so this is how you do scrolling in STL. Uh, so I have this program. I can move left, I can move down, I can move uh, right, I can move up, I can move down. So basically what this is doing is it has a texture and it's drawing a bunch of points that move uh, randomly on this texture around. Then what I'm doing is I'm selecting a source rectangle and a destination rectangle. Uh, keep in mind that there's a thin border around this window. Uh, this is uh, significant and I'm going to explain how to do that in the code. So let's uh, take a look at the code and uh, see how you can implement uh, simple side scrolling like this. As you can see, again, I can move around the screen like this, up, down, and I can also zoom in, zoom in, zoom out, zoom out. Okay, so actually, let's actually take a look. Okay, so this is our source code, and I'm gonna go over, I think, the important parts first, then I'm gonna just review the whole source code just so you understand how it works. So the most important sections of, the most important section of the source code is this source and desk rectangles. These source and destination rectangles determine from which position on the texture you source your data, and then to which destination you are actually gonna draw on the window. So as you can see here, we have this desk rect, and this desk rect is offset by 10 pixels. So it's on the X axis going over by 10, and then on the Y axis is going down by 10. And the screen width for this destination rectangle is minus 20. And the reason why it's minus 20 is because if we move our uh, rectangle over by 10, and then we move it down by 10. You want to make it look like the other side is equivalent. So what you're gonna do is uh, you're gonna subtract 20 because if you move over by 10, you have to subtract 20 from the other side. You're gonna have a, f a fairly um, even looking uh, display. But um, if you don't understand how this is working, um, if you take a look at the source code down here, where we have a render copy. Uh, what we're doing here is uh, we are taking this texture and we're taking a render, or should I say we're passing it a render and we're passing a texture. Uh, the render is pointing to the window, so it, it's, it's basically pointing to the window right now. This texture is the texture to which we're drawing all of our pixels. And the, these source and destination rectangles determine from where we're sourcing this, the pixels. So for example, uh, this source, uh, imagine the source rectangle is being applied to the texture here. And this destination rectangle is being applied to the renderer here. So what we're doing is we're going to uh, this texture and we're saying, okay, so give us a rectangle of pixels that is the size of this source not only going to give you the size of the rectangle, but it's also going to offset on the x and y axes. So if you want to take a section of a texture and you don't want to take a section of the texture, let's say at position 0, 0, uh, you would increase the sources x and y axes, or should I say x and y um, values to reflect where on the texture you want to start taking your data from. And this destination rectangle, uh, what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell you where on the window or where on the render here do you want to show um, these pixels. <clears throat> so as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm dividing the source by 32 and the reason we divide source by 32 is because uh, we can actually take a smaller section of the texture and then we can draw it to the screen. And the, an, interesting, uh, an interesting thing about this API is that when you take a smaller section of pixels and you draw it to the screen, it's actually gonna stretch out those pixels for you and make them much bigger than they actually are. And uh, this is a really uh, nice way to do really simple scaling so if you want to have a, like a 8-bit video game and you have a 4K display, you can just uh, uh, have a high resolution, you can have a high resolution window, but you can 
uh, source uh, the texture uh, divided by like 32 or something and you can have uh, something like that work fairly easily. Okay, so I hope you understand what I just explained. Um, so to go over this program and what it does, uh, we have window and we have render and we have a texture. Uh, this should be fairly self-explanatory. What I'm doing is I'm just creating window, render, uh, and the texture. If you don't know what, what I'm doing here, uh, refer to other videos on STL. Uh, then what we're doing is we're creating a vector and uh, this is uh, gonna be a vector of points. Then what I'm doing is I'm just populating this vector with 10,000 points. Then we begin our main while loop. So this is the main while loop. And then what we're doing is we're handling uh, events. So again, this is fairly simple. You should understand what this what this uh, does. So here we're saying if the if the type of event is quit, we're gonna quit. If the type of event event is key down, we're gonna uh, check which key was pressed. If the up key was pressed, what we're gonna do here is we are going to move um, Y. Uh, we're going to subtract 3 from y. And the reason we do that is because if the up key is pressed, uh, the user is indicating to us that they want to look um, above what's what's um, above the current view. So we're going to move the texture up a little bit to see what's uh, above. Or should I say, we're going to change the offset of the source. And the same on the left and right. So if we, we want, we can move um, the source. We can source the pixels from different locations on the X and Y axis based on user input. And that's how you do scrolling in SDL. Uh, this, um, what I'm doing here is if I click one or two, I'm gonna zoom in or zoom out on this texture. And the way that we zoom in is actually by dividing the width by two. So if we divide width by two, we're taking a smaller sh section of pixels. And because we're taking a smaller section of pixels, those pixels get stretched out when we actually show them to our window. Uh, meanwhile, if I click one, we're gonna zoom out because we're multiplying the width by two. So we're, we're getting more pixels, but because we're getting more pixels, those pixels are gonna be, um, there's gonna be more pixels shown to the screen, which will make them look like they're zoomed out a little bit. And uh, then what we're doing is we're uh, we're basically just uh, clearing the texture. We're setting the target to be our texture. So uh, if we don't do this, it's just going to uh, keep displaying the same pixels over and over again, which is not going to look good. So what we do is just we set this uh, texture to uh, white. We just clear it to white. After that, we are going to move our pixels in a random position. So all of the points on the screen, we're gonna move them randomly by one. So it's either gonna increase by one, uh, decrease by one, or just go nowhere. And then what we're doing is we are setting the draw color to be black. Once it's set to black, we draw all of our points. And finally here, uh, what we're doing is we're copying a selection from the texture to the screen. And as I, as I mentioned, uh, you set null for your render target if you want to render to the screen. Uh, what we do here is we set the draw color to be um, we set the draw color to be white, and when we do that, we clear uh, our render. And then after that, what we're doing is we are taking a source. So we're taking we're taking a source uh, rectangle. So we're taking a rectangle and we're placing it on the texture and saying this is the portion of pixels that we want. And then the destination is where, on, like um, the destination is which area of the screen are you gonna show those pixels to? So the render, uh, so basically the source is corresponding to the texture and then the destination is corresponding to the render. So source is taking a selection of pixels from the texture and destination is drawing those pixels to the render at at that location. So basically, I, again, to explain again, the source, it, what it, the source is doing. So what the source is doing is it's taking a selection of pixels from the texture. And then the destination is specifying where on your render are you gonna show those pixels. 
And when you do that, it's going to take those pixels from the texture and it's going to draw them to the destination on the renderer. So if you understood that, that's great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.